This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1524, Eating to Recover, by Eric Lea of ericlea.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy middle of the week Wednesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Oh, and sometimes a little bit of my commentary at the beginning, like on Wednesdays. You know, Wednesdays are the middle of the week. We might be just trying to push through these last couple of days before the weekend. So I like to offer you a little bit of inspiration. So with that, here we go. Quote, those who bring sunshine into the lives of others cannot keep it from themselves. J.M. Barry. Now, I hope that this podcast brings you a little bit of sunshine. I love sharing this information with you. So thank you so much for listening. But with that, Let's get to today's post and start optimizing your life. Eating to Recover by Eric Lea of ericlea.com Pushing yourself is great, but have you ever pushed yourself too hard? Well, welcome to the squad. I think we can all agree that if we've been in the training game for a bit of time, it's likely that we've pushed ourselves a bit too hard trying to reach a goal. And the end result of that, extra soreness or a pulled muscle at the least, burnout and an injury at the worst. Whatever the case may be, recovery is essential. And what is essential to recovery aside from rest? Nutrition. Eating for recovery. Obviously, rest is operation number one when you're recovering from overtraining, burnout, or an injury. However, another key to the recovery equation is the foods you're consuming. Whole, natural foods contain the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and other compounds that build and repair our bodies. And if we don't get enough of them, well, our bodies don't have what they need to repair and grow effectively. Now, you may be thinking, sweet, I'll up my protein intake. And while that can be effective, and you should be getting plenty of high-quality natural protein, it's not the entire story. One. Add quality carbs. This goes double if you're experiencing burnout, like fatigue, chronic injuries, chronic stress, anxiety, sleeplessness, heart palpitations, and have been going low carb for a while. Our bodies were designed to run on a range of whole foods with varying levels of nutrients at varying times, and foods that contain carbohydrates are included. To clarify, this doesn't mean that going low carb is bad. On the contrary, it can be effective for fat loss and some other conditions. However, just because something works as a solution to a problem doesn't mean we have to continue to use the solution after the problem has resolved. For instance, would you continue to take a medication for a health issue once the issue was cleared? Our ancestors would likely have eaten a varied diet, experiencing periods of low-carb eating when they were lacking starches, and higher carb eating when they had starches or fruit available. Our bodies naturally prefer glucose as a source of fuel, which is why I would always recommend a cyclical approach to low carb if you wanted to try it. In terms of recovery, adding quality, clean carbs like those from sweet potato, butternut squash, parsnips, cassava, berries, and even quinoa can help reduce stress hormones, which play a role in inflammation. Whole food carbs also contain various minerals that help ease your nervous system, further reducing inflammation and assist in repair. Remember, you don't have to go crazy. Simply add a serving or two of the clean carbs like those mentioned before to one or two of your meals. Two, this type of fat. Omega-3s are game changers when it comes to reducing inflammation. Plus, studies have also shown that Consuming enough omega-3s can help prevent and ease muscle soreness, which is what we definitely want right now. Consuming omega-3s from fish gives you a one-two punch for recovery. You get a high dose of omega-3 fatty acids while also getting a clean dose of amino acids that facilitate muscle repair. Be sure to get in a serving of wild-caught fatty fish three times per week. Think wild salmon, sardines, mackerel, and so on. Three. Antioxidants. Any type of damage to your body, self imposed through training, inflammation, or otherwise, produces free radicals, which can cause further damage, even to our DNA. 
consuming foods high in antioxidants reduces the amount of these free radicals so that you can repair more efficiently and with less collateral damage. Foods like organic berries, like blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, oranges, sweet potato, leafy greens like spinach and kale, tomatoes, and even egg yolks are rich in a spectrum of antioxidants that specialize in repair. Try to get in several servings of them per day. Four, magnesium. Magnesium is a critical mineral that plays a role in an extraordinary number of processes in your body. For the sake of recovery, we'll stick to the fact that magnesium heavily participates in the process of energy metabolism and assists the maintenance of normal muscle contraction and relaxation. If we don't get enough of it, studies show that it can impair performance and result in muscle cramps. Magnesium can be found in leafy greens, potatoes, nuts and seeds, and even in high amounts in dark chocolate. Go extra dark to avoid the excess sugar. You can also soak in Epsom salts several times per week to help absorb magnesium through the skin. Five, grass-fed meats. Of course, we couldn't leave protein out of this list. High-quality proteins from grass-fed meats contain all of the essential amino acids your body needs to repair your musculoskeletal system. Meat that has been grass-fed is also higher in omega-3s when compared to their grain-fed counterparts. So, you'll also be getting a higher dose of omegas. Try to consume a serving with each meal, even slightly upping your intake, not excessively, but perhaps by a few ounces, for a recovery. What about other supplements? My advice is to always stick to whole foods and natural herbs before relying too heavily on supplements. But sometimes, we could use a little extra help in meeting our foundational nutrient requirements. And some individuals who are training much more intensely than others, say at an athlete's level, could also use a boost. For recovery, it would help to focus on additional branch chain amino acids, which are also found in animal proteins, and glutamine, which can help assist in muscle repair. Making sure your mineral base is covered is a good idea as well. Increase your fruit and veggie intake to do this naturally, or consider a multivitamin mineral supplement. You can also look into anti-inflammatory herbs and foods like ginger and turmeric, which can help reduce excess inflammation. The bottom line. One, food provides the building blocks our bodies need to repair from injuries, soreness, and overtraining. Two, increase your intake of clean carbs slightly during recovery to ease stress and refuel glycogen stores. Three, make sure to get plenty of anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids from fish. Four, increase your magnesium intake. And five, eat plenty of grass-fed protein. You just listened to the post titled Eating to Recover by Eric Leia of ericleia.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I really appreciated today's author, Eric's approach to nutrition for recovery. His tips are spot on and supported by actual research studies. The only additional tip I would add would be sure to drink plenty of water. This becomes particularly important after one of those really challenging workouts, you know, the one where you're so tired you can barely walk back to your car or make it up the stairs. We need to be sure to drink plenty of water after these types of workouts especially to protect the health of our kidneys. Now, you might be wondering, how much water do I need to drink exactly then? Well, the best way to know is to weigh yourself before you exercise, then immediately after. What you'll find is that you probably lost a little bit of weight during your workout. Now, don't get too excited. This is not fat weight that's lost, it's water weight. So the advice goes something like this. For each pound you lost during your workout, drink 20 fluid ounces of water. So let's say you weighed yourself before your workout and you weighed 150 pounds. Then after your workout, you weighed yourself again and found you now weigh 149 pounds. You lost one pound of water weight during your workout. So to protect the health of your kidneys, aim to drink 20 fluid ounces of water for every pound lost. Since one pound was lost, aim to consume 20 fluid ounces of water 
which is about two and a half cups after your workout. All right, that'll do it for another edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. And I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.